Hey there folks, in this video lesson we are going to be just doing a quick review on how to factor. Uh, for this one we're going to be factoring quadratic trinomials for the most part. Quadratic meaning it has an x squared, trinomial means it has one, two, three terms. Uh, we will discuss a little bit of special cases once we get over here to difference of squares. Uh, we'll get there shortly, but all of this is going to kind of be the foundational work for simplifying, multiplying, adding, subtracting, dividing, solving rational expressions and equations. So let's get into it. So when we are doing this, our goal is to kind of undistribute this polynomial and kind of figure out what two binomials would multiply and simplify to x squared minus 7x plus 12. Well, my first term is going to be broken apart and split up into the first position in each parenthesis group. And then my last term will have its factors in the second spot of each parenthesis group. So let's start off with the x squared. Well, there's technically a 1 attached, so that would be a 1x squared. And the only way to get a 1x squared, if I'm breaking it apart into two things being multiplied together, would be a 1x times a 1x. x times x gives us x squared. For 12, I've got a few options. Maybe I could use 1 and 12. Maybe it's 2 and 6. Maybe it is 3 and 4. Well, my goal is to plug in numbers so that they multiply to be 12, aka one of these combos here. But when I add them together, they would add up to be a negative 7. So if I were to do x times this number and then this number times x, that combination would be negative 7. The winning combo here would be 3 and 4, both negative. And I could have the order backwards if I wanted. I could say x minus 4, x minus 3. So negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. Negative 3x and negative 4x, if I were to do that distribution, a negative 4x and a negative 3x, that would give us a negative 7x. The next one's going to be slightly more challenging because now we've got a coefficient out front. The process, however, is going to be the exact same. I know the first term in each parenthesis chunk has to be things that would multiply to be 3x squared. Each term is going to have an x. And then the coefficients attached just have to be numbers that multiply to be 3. Uh, fortunately, there's only one way to do that, and that's just 3 times 1. The last term, 1, is going to kind of dictate what numbers go in that second piece over here. Well, again, fortunately, this is just a 1, so I could put a 1 here and a 1 here. And I think I may have made a typo when I made this. Awesome. So, when we do our distribution, we'd have 3x times 1. Well, that would be 3x. We have 1 times 1x, that would be a 1x. So, that would yield a 4x in the middle. So, this should actually be a 4x. My apologies on that one. But, hey, we caught it now. All right, this next one, 6x squared plus 16x plus 8. If I were to try to factor this right off the bat and try to figure out, okay, numbers that multiply to be 6x squared, I'd have 1 and 6, maybe 2 and 3. That could lead into a lot of extra uh, combinations that, that maybe I, I don't have the time or patience to deal with. So what I want to do is maybe I can shrink down these numbers first. I'm noticing these are all even values, which means I can take out a GCF or a greatest common factor of 2. So if I were to take out a GCF of 2, this is going to turn into 3x squared plus 8x plus 4. So that 2 is just going to kind of hang out out front. And now I'm going to focus on this 3x squared plus 8x plus 4 piece. Kind of doing the similar way that we would just done before. Values that multiply to be 3x. Well, there's only one way to do that. That's 3x times 1x. Uh, values that multiply to be 4. Well, it's either going to be a 1 and a 4 or maybe a 2 and a 2. My goal is to get a combination. So when I plug these into the second space in each parenthesis chunk, I want a combination that would add up to be 8. So if I did 1 and 4, 
let's pretend I had a one here and a four here. That would be 12x and 1x. That's not going to give us eight. Maybe I switch them. I put a four here and a one here. Four here and a one here. So that'd be uh, three times one is three x. Four times one, that'd be four x. That makes seven. So that's not going to work. So it's got to be two and two. Well, since they're both the same number, it doesn't really matter which one goes where. I'd have three x times two, that's six x. Two times one x is two x. So six x and two x. Yep, they're both positive. That'll give us that positive 8x in the middle. So this would be our final factored answer. <clears throat> Next one, x squared minus 25. This is what's called a difference of squares pattern. So anytime you see only two terms separated by a minus sign, this is kind of where our head should be leading. If you really wanted to, you could put a zero in the middle if that kind of helps you visualize things. So we'd still want to break this apart into two parentheses chunks with terms that would multiply to be negative 25 but add up to zero. Well, if they add up to zero, they basically cancel each other out. So just like we've been doing, first term has to be numbers or values that would multiply to x squared. Only way to do that, x times x. The last term is going to dictate what goes in that second spot of each parentheses chunk. So numbers that multiply to be negative 25, but cancel each other out to zero, well, that would be a negative 5 and a positive 5. This pattern right here is called difference of squares because these are both perfect square terms. And when they factor down, these are called conjugate pairs, where they look the same, but one has a plus, one's got a minus. And the order does not matter. All right, last and final one. We have 15x squared plus x minus 2. Unfortunately, there is no GCF, which means we might have to do a little extra guessing and checking. So the first term is 15. That last term is a negative 2. Well, fortunately, there's only one way to get a 2, and that's just a 1 times 2. So I don't have too many options there. However, the 15, I've got 1 and 15, and I've got 2 and 5. So let me try 1x and 15x first. I don't think this is going to work out, but you never know. And I want to put numbers in. It's got to be 1 and 2. So it's either 1 here and a 2 here or 2 here and 1 here. So that when I distribute, I'd get a 1x in the middle. So if I did a 1 here and a 2 here, that would give me a 15 and a 2. There's no way to get 1x out of that. If I put a 2 here and a 1 here, that would give me a 30x and a 1x. So neither of those are going to work. And I kind of suspected that. So that means it's got to be, oops, I wrote 2 and 5. 3 and 5, my bad. So we're going to have a 3x and a 5x. And again, order doesn't matter. It's 3x, 5x. And it's either going to be a 1 here and a 2 here, or a 2 here and a 1 here. So let's try a 1 and a 2. If I did a 1 here and a 2 here, that would be 6x and 5x. 6x and 5. So if I did 6x minus 5x, that would work out to be the 1x. And it's going to be a negative 2, so that's what I wanted. So I need the 6x to be positive, so I'll have a plus 2 over here. And I need that 5x to be negative, so I'll put a minus 1 there. And now that thing is factored. And I can't make circles to, to circle my answer. So that's awesome. All right, so that is factoring in a nutshell. We will be using that a whole lot throughout this next unit. As always, if you have any questions, do not hesitate.